name is Mark von Keitz, and I'm a program director at RPE. For the last several years, I've been leading the RPE Marina program. This program is funding technology development to cost-effectively produce macroalgae, also known as seaweed, in the open ocean at energy-relevant scales. The Marina program was motivated by the critical role bioenergy plays in future deep decarbonization scenarios. In most of these scenarios, the role of bioenergy is constrained by the amount of biomass that can be sustainably supplied without negatively impacting feed and food for a growing world population. But we don't have to limit our thinking to land-grown crops. The area of ocean accessible to the United States is actually larger than its total land area. The Marion program is all about learning how to use the ocean for sustainable production of macroalgal biomass. However, growing the macroalgae is only the first step. It is equally important to develop technologies that convert this novel macroalgal biomass into economically viable energy and climate relevant products. ARPA-E held an online workshop on this topic in November of last year, and we are now looking for your engagement and ideas to make these products a reality. The Open 2021 program is one great way to become involved. Macroalgae are the quintessential ocean crop. There are about 15,000 different species across a wide range of geographies. They grow very fast with no need for fresh water and artificial fertilizer. And most importantly, they are amenable to cultivation and harvest. There is in fact already a big macroalgae industry, mainly centered in Asia, which produces over 32 million metric tons of wet seaweed per year, an amount that has doubled over the last 10 years. These macroalgae are now being used primarily for food and the production of thickening agents. You may already have eaten nori at the sushi restaurant. Agar, alginate, and carrageenan are thickening agents which are widely used in a variety of food products. But there are also opportunities to leverage macroalgae to solve energy and climate challenges. Macroalgaes have been shown to mitigate methane production in ruminant animals. And like other biomass, it can be used as a feedstock to make bioenergy and industrial products. Finally, there may be ways to actually use macroalgae for long-term carbon sequestration. In order to do all this, we need to massively scale up production. To be relevant in the energy economy, production has to increase at least 100 times over what we are doing today. At the same time, the cost of production has to be drastically reduced. In order to enable this transformation, RPE launched the Mariner program back in 2016. The goal was to produce macroalgal biomass with no need for land, fresh water, or synthetic fertilizer. RPE has already committed over $50 million to more than 20 different projects. The Marina program seeks to enable the production of seaweed at a cost of $80 per dry metric ton on offshore farms that are over a thousand hectares in size. To achieve this goal, this program seeks to integrate a number of different technologies as shown on this slide. If you're interested, you can learn much more about the Mariner program at this website. In the context of carbon sequestration, a simple rule of thumb is that one ton of dry macroalgae has captured about one ton of carbon dioxide. To move the needle on climate change, we would ideally seek to capture one gigaton or more of carbon dioxide every year. Here are a few rough numbers describing what may be required under different scenarios to achieve a gigaton of production. In addition to these production challenges, we need to consider what we can do with these large volumes of seaweed and how to do it. Seaweed is often in seasonal supply, but in other ways it is not like your typical terrestrial crop. It has a much higher water content that water is typically salty, and at the same time, there's quite a lot of inorganic ash in the material, which can be as high as 40% by weight. Nonetheless, there have been a number of approaches that people have taken to processing seeds. 
from simply washing and drying it to extracting certain compounds like hydrocolloids to more complex fermentation processes for biogas or industrial products. There have been even some efforts with hydrothermal processing. The critical question is how the economics of these processes map into market opportunities for the associated end products. For this industry to grow, it is critical to find markets that are compatible with the economics of production. This slide is a very high-level representation of potential seaweed applications, showing potential market sizes at different biomass production costs, as well as the anticipated development time for the necessary technologies. The biggest bubble on this chart shows a high potential volume if seaweed can be grown simply for capture of carbon. Clearly, this use will face major cost challenges. The next largest bubble shows the anticipated volume for conversion of seaweed into energy and co-products in biorefineries. One technological approach that combines both of these opportunities is BECS, the acronym for Bioenergy with Carbon Capture and Storage. BECS envisions that we will capture CO2 with macroalgae and then go through an anaerobic digestion process to produce biogas, which is a mixture of methane and CO2. The CO2 can be separated and sequestered. The methane would be used like natural gas in processes like power plants, where we again produce CO2 that can be sequestered, generating energy with a net carbon negative product flow. While it is possible to produce methane from macroalgae, there are still many technical challenges. We have to ask ourselves how to maximize the efficiency of conversion, that is, the amount of methane that we can produce from the available biomass. One possibility is to leverage natural processes that are already tailored to digest seaweed. We already have one project underway that is investigating the microbiome of herbivorous fish to see if those organisms can be leveraged for anaerobic digestion. In addition to making the bioenergy products, we still want to explore potential co-products that can generate additional revenue. One obvious option is using the nitrogen incorporated in seaweed. While the nitrogen content of macroalgae is relatively small, somewhere between 1 and 5 percent, and even if we are assuming just 2 percent, the large volume of material that we would be processing still could result in 20 million metric tons of nitrogen per year, which is nearly double the amount that we used as fertilizer on all major crops in 2020. And then there is the inorganic ash fraction, which can make up as much as 40% depending on the species. This ash contains nutrients like phosphorus and potassium, but also a lot of other sequestered metals, which may be recoverable and could have high economic value. In November 2020, we held a workshop that looked more closely at some possible approaches for converting macroalgae to fuel and fertilizer products. Some of the technologies we explored were anaerobic digestion, hydrothermal liquefaction, and fertilizer recovery. We also looked at the possibility of synergistically integrating all these processes. At the bottom of this slide is a link to some of the findings from this workshop and the background presentations. I encourage you to take a look at what is presented there. Most importantly, however, I wanted to emphasize that this is not an exhaustive list of possibilities. We really are looking for ideas from you that cover the whole spectrum of options, not limited to the ones that are listed here. Recently, there has also been a lot of conversation about the possibility of using the enormous carbon capture potential of macroalgae strictly for climate benefits. By sinking this carbon to the deep ocean and thereby sequestering it for long periods of time. This is a process that tends to occur naturally with kelp beds that exist on many, many coastlines. The question that arises is whether we can scale this natural process and sink large volumes of farmed and harvested seaweed to the deeper ocean. Before we can do that, we will need to answer some very critical questions. These include 
How long will the seaweed really stay in the deep ocean? What are the best locations to do that? How can we minimize any potential negative effects on the benthic ecosystem? And finally, what are the best and most cost-effective technologies for sinking the seaweed? I've described a number of possibilities that are meant to inspire and stimulate your thinking. In the end, we really want to excite your imagination on how best to use macroalgae for energy and climate benefits. We look forward to hearing your ideas. Thank you very much for your attention. <music>